Okay guys, it's a couple of days later. As you can see, the little fry now are just starting to take off from the bottom. I've put some water worms in. You can see them in the water column slowly floating down. Now the parents are going to feed on these as well as the babies. I've just put them in so it looks like there's lots of food for the parents. So they can... Um, so they can teach them how to eat and stuff like that. They're going to do it automatically anyway. But you can see the babies now. They're just starting to lift off, off the bottom. Got to try and be a little bit careful here. I don't want to spook them. But that's good news. They're, uh, they've not been scoffed as yet, which is good. And there's a lot more down there than I thought there was. So you imagine, you, if you can remember how many I took out. That was the, the remainder that was on the top of the pot. They've gathered up there now. And some of these little guys are venturing a little bit further away from her. She'll quickly whiz out, grab them in her mouth, and pop them back into the pile where they're nice and safe in their protection. So I'm just going to carefully just go back out again now. Look at that. They've been right the way up to the front of the glass, or the acrylic I should say. And... Um, like I say, it's, it's quite funny. It's, it's lovely to watch them just corralling those little babies around, making sure that none stray too far from their watchful little eyes. But that's brilliant news. So I'll get back to you guys when they're a little bit stronger and they're starting to swim around and taking these little water worms actively out of the water column. Now these, these water worms are not going to die. They're, they'll live in the water for quite some time. So and they'll bury in amongst the substrate and the babies will find them pick them out as they're mooching around the uh, mooching around in the tank looking for things to eat as they get a bit bigger right guys we are up and swimming up in the water column look at those little cloud of beautiful little babies there my daughter came in she did make me laugh last night she said oh my god dad they're gorgeous they're gorgeous I'm going to name the parents Tim and Sarah. And I was like, why Tim and Sarah? And she was like, I don't know. It's the first name that sprung to my mind. So we've got Tim and Sarah and the family now all um, happily looking after their little cloud of babies. And um, at the moment, being very, very good, not letting them stray too far, or it's straight back in the mouth and spit them back into the middle of the ball again. As you can see, they, they grab them and then puff them back out. Sometimes it looks like they don't puff them back out and they eat them, but um, there you go, mum just brought one back in and they just corral them slowly around the tank as they drift around. They may pick off the odd one, they may have a bit of a spook with me being here, because at the moment I'm spending very, very little time in the uh, in the workshop here. But it, they'll start to eat them super fast if they get spooked. Now I've put on the left and the right hand side of the tank I've put some uh, coverings so the back's covered and the sides are covered so the only way to look in and out is through the front the front viewing panel here so you guys can have a look because I've got Jack next door who's obviously a predatory fish and if they see him or he swims towards them they're going to start eating them and likewise the other way we've got some fish that side as well so everything's been cordoned off but she's got, can you remember the last, the, well, when, when I went in there last time, I had a, a good turkey baster full of fry, which is still coming on really well in the in the, um, in the the zebra pleco tank in my shrimp room. They're still coming on well, but these guys are up in the water column now, eagerly looking for food. Now, what I've got, I'm just, I'm talking slow, so don't, even the vibrations, I don't want anything to go wrong. I want you guys to see these hopefully grow up and have a nice time together and not to, uh, to lose them. So what I've done is here, is I've got some water worms, which I will carefully show you. I've got a syringe here. Now, if it'll focus on it. You can see all those. It's not going to do any focusing at all. Look at that. Well, you can sort of see the, the water worms in there. All blowing around. In fact, if I zoom back out. Now 
There you go. You can see hundreds and hundreds of little water worms in there. Now I'm going to start squeezing them in the top very carefully, dripping them in. And I'll zoom back in again. And hopefully, I'll just puff a few down towards them. You may see them coming down, or you may not. You'll have to keep your eyes peeled. There you go, they're just starting to come into frame now. And these little guys are big enough to start taking these straight away. They probably got a little bit of egg yolk, a little bit of the old egg sac left there. But they will start to take these tiny little water worms from a very early age. We don't need to feed them the infusoria like we do the, the neons and the, all the other small egg layers that we've bred here in the, uh, in the workshop. But um, they're going to start taking them off and they will stay alive in the tank for quite some time. So as the day, you know, as the day progresses, they're going to use more of that supply, their own supply up. And then they'll start predating on these little water worms and putting on some size. But at the moment, I'll just find them again for you. They've drifted off that way. There you go. But they are actually a stunning pair of rams. They really are. Actually, Richard from Ponga, he, he commented on there about um, the Indian almond leaves and putting them in there. That is another very good way of doing it because of the, uh, the antibacterial and antifungicidal properties, like he said, they've got in the leaves and they will lay on the leaves and that will stop fungus attacking the eggs. This is a very clean system in here anyway. Um, we never had any problem with fungus, but it's a very, very good idea for some of the other small cichlids as well. They do like to lay on, on leaves because of those properties that they hold. And he's been good as gold, bless him, and he sent me a load of a load more coming in the post. So um, we can use some of those up in future videos. He's been very good to this channel. He's helped me out so much over the, over the last sort of year and a half. It's been... Uh, I really do thank him a lot. Cheers, mate, if you watch this video. Thank you very much. And if you haven't seen Richard's videos, Pong Guru, go and have a look at him. He's got some amazing stuff on there. Goes back about 10 years and um, covers all, all a range of things. He's done all kinds of stuff. Very interesting guy. And at the moment, I think he's building this monstrosity of a pond filter for his well. I wouldn't say it's a pond. It's more like a lake he's got in his garden. But it's um, he's making a massive filter for it, which is an interesting build. So pop across to his channel and um and check out his uh, big pond filter and all the other videos that he's got on there as well look at that absolutely beautiful stunning colors one of my favorites the gold rams because they get that lovely reddy tinge to the nose and the male does on the dorsal film and the uh, pectoral fins as well absolutely beautiful Nothing better to see a big cloud of fry with the parents looking after them. But you guys who have got community tanks, this is where it goes a bit wrong. Or even with two pairs in there. If you've got just a pair, you're going to be a lot more successful in rearing the fry without the parents eating them. Because of that stress factor. They stress so easily. They really can't emphasise that enough. They really do stress easy. Anything that they think is going to predate on those babies and what they'll do is they'll think well I'm not going to with nature like a lot of things what they'll do is they'll think in their minds okay I'm not going to let all these fry feed and all that energy go into something else so that what they'll do is they'll they'll think if they're going to get predated on they'll eat all their own babies that way they're putting all that nutrition back into them for the next brood and they'll go on from there and then you'll get another batch of fry but even if you've got two pairs in a tank I know one of you guys said to me they've got you've got two pairs in one tank, but one pair can stress the other one out if it's not big enough and the territory is too close. So it's always best to do it in a single tank like this. It's only a small um, five gallon, five or six gallon tank, this one, it's not very big at all. And you're more success, it could, I mean, I say that, and it could go wrong very quickly for me just being here and talking to you with me in the picture, but hopefully it won't. But with community tanks as well, guys, um, it's very important that you give these guys a big enough tank. Once they've got the space and they've got the cover and they can hide in amongst the plants. I mean, a really heavily planted tank's fine. You can, might get some spawn survive, but little tetras and things, they'll dart in amongst that cloud and they will strip them out in no time at all. Um, I've seen it happen in the past as I've been growing up with fish and I've done it years back. When you think there's enough 
plants in there and enough cover for them. The, the parents will panic and a um, little bit scratchy there girl. What's going on there? And um, yes, you need, especially somebody said about plecos as well. Now plecos are right little predators at night. When, when, when you turn those lights off of the night time and you imagine you've got these fish in here with a big cloud of fry, all the fry go down into the, into the bottom of the night. They're not up in the air like this at night. She's eating something or he's eating something. It's not agreeing with him at the moment. Unless he's got one of his kids stuck in his throat. Yeah, he seems to be all right now. They get things happen with them the same as we do. But yeah, plecos can be very um, naughty at night when you're not watching them. The old bristle noses, they'll graze on the glass really, really nicely. Keep your tank polished. But they're opportunistic feeders as well. And they will take fry from the uh, from the little pits in the bottom where they hide them. Or they'll scatter them at night in a community tank. And then the fry will go everywhere. And then they'll wake up in the morning and they'll all be gone. Because the fish will predate on them first light and they'll be gone. So this is the best way to breed them single tank just the parents and the babies in that way they're really calm they can go about their business daily and bring it up bringing up their fry and that's all they want to do they just want to they're all happy parents at the moment and they just want to bring them fry up to healthy young little little babies and then um, we can rehome them then to uh, to other places not all of these are going to survive some of them are going to have probably little defects in them and um, they won't be as strong as others the strong ones will will survive but at the moment my goodness there's um there's got to be a couple of hundred there <laughs> it's uh, and we've taken out another i don't know how many and we've got in the shrimp room as well and they're coming on they're up in the water column in there now as well but i'm going to concentrate on these guys with you for the time being because it's going nicely i think they've had those water worms i'll put a few more in i think And all I do is every sort of two or three times a day, I'll just come in and I'll just see them going down there now. I just puff a little tiny bit with that syringe in. I'll put some of the water worms, I'll strip them out of the bowl, like I've said to you before if you watched that video, um, with a paintbrush. Stir it into a little pot of water. And what happens is then, if all your micro worms then will fall to the bottom. And any detritus and stuff and bits of rubbish from the pot will stay on the surface as like a scum. So then what you do is you just wait till they sink to the bottom and you suck them out, suck them up into your syringe and that way you only get the water and the worms, you don't get any of the rubbish going in to the tank as well. But everyone's happy there, very very happy.
Right guys, I'm going to leave you on that. So as always, your stars, thank you for tuning in for part two. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you on the next edition of Mark's Aquatics. Bye for now. Just me and my guitar.